Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to, uh, I'm considering doing a new series. I love series. Anything with a theme, I'm on it. So the idea is hidden gems, and I would like you to participate by telling me some just obscure books that really good people have worked in. So today what I'm going to show you is what one of the hidden gems that I know of, which is Kevin Nolan did a really amazing series called Grimwood's Daughter in the back of these Dalgoda comic books. And the art is really, really good. If you're a fan of Kevin Nolan or Jay Lee or uh, Dennis Cohen or any of these people that do kind of like that um, darker, more angular art, you're really going to like this art a lot. Kevin Nolan, a lot of times his work is a little bit understated, but um, there's a subtlety and kind of like just there's a, a vibe, uh, a very naturalistic quality that he gets out of his work that's really, really impressive. So without further ado, we'll get into this, but I wanted to show you the cover. So the the, the series runs, I believe, in the backs of Dalgota 2 through 6. So it's not the full book. And I didn't, I didn't pull up the other art, which is actually nice. And Dalgota is pretty good. And Kevin Nolan actually did do some black and white Dalgota art. But um, we're going to look at Grimwood's Daughter. So, all right, let's go, friends. There's no time like the present. This is the last page of the um, story. Not of the story, but um, kind of like a little ender sort of bonus pinup or cover image type thing. But really, really beautiful illustration. I mean, Kevin Nolan, it's it's really his his impact and, and influence on comics in some ways is very immeasurable because of the, the fact that he's he's in so many artists work. Jim Lee would not look like Jim Lee without Kevin Nolan. Adam Hughes would not look like Adam Hughes without Kevin Nolan. And you go, this stuff doesn't look like Jim Lee. This doesn't look like Adam Hughes. I'm telling you, I know both of these guys. I'm friends with them can say that and they both love kevin nolan's work and many others do too so trust me <laughs> so the colors on this are done i believe by kevin um but uh, some of the reproductions aren't great this is actually off of newsprint scans which we've been talking about lately so it, it does have a cool factor that's quite nice but um uh, we'll just get into this and, and we can look at it. Really, really beautiful logo written by Jan Strand, illustrated by Kevin Nolan. That's when you know you've made it in comics and you're super fancy is when they don't say pencils by so-and-so. You illustrated the story. It's the next level. It's something we should all aspire to. <laughs> I don't think, like, honestly, in the credits for Blaster Kid, I don't think that I would put Illustrated by, even though I would consider it an illustrated comic book. But uh, I would just put pencils and inks. I'm very humble. <laughs> All right. So you're already going like, whoa, this does kind of look like Jay Lee. Early Jay Lee. Jay may not have ever have seen this particular story, but I assure you that Jay Lee is definitely, definitely influenced by Kevin Nolan. Um, I, I could go back and probably reverse engineer what stuff he might have pulled from. There's a high likelihood that he may not have seen these issues because, again, what are these? These are freaking hidden gems. Most people don't know about this book. I know someone that will, though. They'll probably comment. We'll see. But anyway. Kevin has... it's it, His stuff is so interesting. It's It's honestly... You, you'll you be able to gauge how far along you are in your actual consumption of art by if you can appreciate this or not. If you don't like it, there's a high likelihood that your tastes are not refined and people are going, whoa, 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 Rich, shots fired. What are you saying? Are you talking trash about me? In some ways, I am. <laughs> Kevin Nolan is like, like um, your grandfather gives you a sip of some rare aged whiskey or fancy thing, some beverage. <laughs> and uh, you go, this stuff tastes like shit. How do you like this? Like a cigar. It's like someday you'll understand. Kevin Nolan might be like that for some, for some art fans. I assure you that there's a reason that people like Adam Hughes and Jim Lee though are fans of, and myself included and many others. 
uh, a good friend of mine, Travel Foreman. Travel, if you see this, what's up? I still want to collaborate with you on, on some comic books. So that has not... that. Uh, what would you call it? The You bringing that up definitely was appealing to me. But Travel, Travel has a lot of Kevin Nolan in his stuff. And it's a naturalistic quality. It's There's a little bit of like a creepiness to it. It's really well drawn but kind of casual at the same time usually never never over rendered but yet expertly done in a stylish way and um joe casada right now has got kevin Owen inking some batman stuff over him but uh they they did uh sort of asriel together Kevin Nolan did stuff in Jack Be Quick. He's got a really fantastic Outsiders annual that he did. Um, Man Bat is another, um, some stories that he did with Man Bat. Um, he did some beautiful covers for Wolverine. There's an artist edition coming out from um, IDW soon of Kevin Nolan that I'm quite excited to see. He did Man Thing. I think that was the painted book that he did. Finally came out <clears throat> after many years. But this isn't the greatest Kevin Nolan like story ever, so I don't I don't want you to go like, well, this stuff isn't blowing my mind to the level that you're like hyping it up to be. The point is, is that it's it is really nice Kevin Nolan stuff um, that is a little off the grid. You know, if you didn't have someone tell you about it, you you might not ever stumble upon this. So that's that's really the point of this. Is as much as I was being kind of funny and snarky. Um, I come from a genuine place of this is actually pretty cool, and there's a, a chance that people might not know it. And I, I grabbed um, four of the short stories, and they're really not that short, all things considered. Um, many times a, a backup story will only be like eight pages, so this has actually got a little bit more, um, a little bit more to it. In some ways, his page layouts remind me a bit of Hal Foster here, which is kind of interesting. But Kevin definitely has some old school influences because I remember um, he has a blog. I think it's still up. You can kind of read. He he writes little, not like essays, but he, he gives background on kind of where he gets ideas and stuff like that. It's real interesting. Um, but uh, yeah, some of the old strip artists and stuff like that. But he has some of the layouts remind me of Hal Foster where they're very um, kind of uh, what would you call it like horizontal and vertical like he doesn't he doesn't um switch the the angle of the camera shot a lot where you get like you know uh, well there's kevin right there that's funny nebraska my band played in lincoln on every tour that we did of the U.S., we never neglected Nebraska. People there were actually quite nice, too, I have to say. I have good memories of Nebraska. <laughs> okay, so let's start at the top end of this. All right, so this is the cover of this one. This is Dalgota number three. And the, the artist that did um, the first stories, his name is Dennis Fujitaki, who I actually don't know his work past these comics but um it's got like a little tiny bit of like a mobius thing there's there's other things going on but uh it's just an ad in the back you can see a little bit of black and white art okay all right this is a really famous uh, piece from the series I, i'm not sure why but it's one of the ones that i've seen more than most Maybe they used it for ads, or the original art had sold, something like that. But I've, I've seen this piece more than most of the art. I actually own most of these comics. I'm not 100% sure that I have all of them um, in hard copies, or whatever you want to call it, like the comic books themselves. I've definitely got, you know, I think I've got four of them. It, it might only be four issues. It might be two through six that they run in. It's nice. One interesting thing that I'll point out, I mean, I don't know if it's interesting, but but one thing that Kevin does on this that to me is sometimes an indication of like a younger artist is uh, he keeps his perspective very like lined up, meaning that like um, 
you'll notice like when he does the buildings they're very much like in perspective and like he turns the chairs like here at the table but i mean you know like things are like lined up to perspective like very literally um and usually when artists move further into their career they'll start to juxtap like not juxtapose but they'll they'll turn things a little bit just to make it not like everything like it's not like it's like you know when you see like a town like a cowboy western shot or something and it's like every building goes to like the same vanishing point every window um you know some of the backgrounds have a little bit of that vibe it's funny jay jay used stuff like this a lot jay lee two-headed cow this could be a nod to some of his tom strong or not tom strong um jack b quick stories he had a lot of farm stuff in it some crazy stuff going on here it's oh this is nice really good oh man that's great the blacks on this are so classic kevin Nolan. you like anyone that's a fan of kevin Nolan, if you showed this to them and they had never seen it before odds are they could guess that it's kevin Nolan based on just literally what he drew here to me that's like those are signature marks that an artist creates in their work um this you know it's it's kevin Nolan almost doesn't need to sign his work because his work is his signature this face is kevin Nolan. You really want to get to that point with your art and then not everyone will but you you know what you see sometimes is you'll look at a piece of art and you'll go is that david finch and then it's like oh no it's one of the like 25 people that that kind of draws like david and that's not david's fault um but you know it's it's uh you 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 might be better off having it where when someone sees a piece of your work that they go that's definitely so and so i can tell because dale keown draws like this joe matarera does this and you you know you don't want to be the 30 second um version of their style so it's easier said than done but it's something to at least kind of keep in the back of your mind that you can actually do it but you have to draw on your own you know It's a really interesting. Someone who's a fan of art and music and stuff like that, I've I've. It's rare that I'll be a fan of like a copy, of something that I like, but occasionally the copies will evolve into something unique on their own. It doesn't happen a lot though. I'd say it's like literally like. maybe 10 percent most never find their voice if you if you're if you get latched into emulating other things normally you're just gonna keep emulating you'll move you might move on to a different thing but more likely than not you've learned to you've learned to create by copying which is normal but then you've also um you've gotten stuck in it you can't it's like you can't take the training wheels off the bike even if you draw well what you need to do is you need to spend a year just drawing out of your head and taking all the information that you have in it and then letting it sort of evolve on its own. It's funny. This looks like, um, <laughs> uh, God, he's like, I, is it a, Doug Henning, the magician? I think that's like, it, it's not supposed to be, but like his, the, the profile kind of looks like him. I think he was like a seventies ma uh, magician or something or performer i don't remember what he did this is pretty cool very like elongated yeah there's definitely no mistaking kevin nolan now <laughs> right. he draws a fine beast this is all kevin nolan's co colors his colors are very distinct too um this this to me is very kevin nolan in particular this bottom panel he, he'll he have a tendency to use these um colors together actually i'm gonna do this this will be a more abstract but um 
it'll also you then you just will focus on the colors but when kevin nolan paints a lot of times you'll see this palette and his stuff like um the the man thing story he did i'm pretty sure it's man thing as i said before i can but um this gets a little out of his normal color range but th like this is kevin nolan it's this, it's these purples or violets and blues and then the green this is really in his wheelhouse it's almost like an abalone shell kind of color scheme and then this all right we'll look at one more and then i'm going to end it i don't want this to go too long no one will watch it to the end well not no one but uh, we'll do four let me see yeah let's grab these all right let's see what we got here don't peek don't peek close your eyes close, close your eyes all right so we've got a sexy what is this an elk Again, that Kevin Nolan color palette. I honestly, I swear to God, although the, the drawing doesn't look super Kevin nolan -y, you crop it like right here and show this to me. And if you said, who do you think painted this or drew it and painted it? I would guess Kevin Nolan, just based on the colors. I really would. That's powerful shit, man. I think I'm harping on it. It's like it's a very important thing. So this is 1984. Van Halen was about to collapse in on itself. <laughs> and there's videos where people do that, where they're like, they'll they'll do a comic review, but they give you like a little rundown of what was going on in 1984. Ronald Reagan was president. John Hinckley was preparing to try to assassinate him. Steve Vai was touring with Frank Zappa. No, I don't think he was at that point. I think he was solo. <laughs> what else was going on in 84? I think Duran Duran was blowing up around then. The first Duran Duran album had dropped. Maybe Rio. <laughs> Oh, it's nice. All right, so we're wrapping this up. We just got a few more images. You guys have a great day. Hopefully this was somewhat fun to look at. I wasn't too much of a jerk. Again, not the, the not the greatest Kevin Nolan story ever, but this is really really cool and um, something a little bit different with a lot of Kevin Nolan isms in it. Pretty nice cape right there. I like that. Really, really cool. So, and again, there's a sixth issue that um, has, has a little bit more of the story. So, if you ever want to read it, you can always get the, the final chapter. Check it out. nice drawings very very um like really nice backup stories that kind of stand out from what you might see in a comic um and uh that's always good you know i i i remember years ago getting an opportunity to, to do a pinup that i penciled um which was rare at the time um it was in an everquest book that jim lee um, penciled and Dan Norton did finishes on and um, I think they were going to have five pinups in the back of the book and I remember going like so I've got one page and basically like a 70 page comic and I need to do something that's going to stand out and be memorable and 
something that Jim Lee is penciling and that four really good other pencilers are going to be doing pinups in the back of the thing. And I immediately thought back to people like Kevin Nolan and Mike Mignola, which like if you if you're a fan of Mignola or or you're even aware of Mignola, when Mignola would do a pinup in like the old books in the eighties and, and even kind of before Hellboy early nineties, um, they always kind of stood out and they always sort of were like they kind of get burned in your memory because they were so graphic and and you know, the same kind of goes for short stories like this. A lot of art and comics is iconography, meaning that it's iconic images that a lot of times maybe aren't as dynamic as you might think, and they might, they maybe aren't as detailed as you might think. But there's there's a look, there's something there's something that stays with you after you see it that you kind of there's a like it's it's a little more interesting, and and. You know, even for me, when I came up with the idea to do the black drawing art that I do, which has kind of evolved into the Blaster Kid style, that all came from from realizing that, you know, you can go to like a comic book convention and see tons of artists that are absolutely incredible, that can draw so well, they can paint so well, and yet their work isn't memorable. It doesn't stand out. There's nothing really like unique about it. And, and, it was a real, I wouldn't call it a revelation for me because I was already kind of aware of that, but it, but it reminded me when I went in and really kind of started to carve out what I was going to do with my own work, which was that I, I really needed to have a signature style that was things that I enjoyed doing, but also wouldn't be mistaken for other artists' work or, or that would be powerful images that had some sort of graphic punch to it that that more more times than not when you would draw something it would be memorable and wouldn't be like the 500,000th fantasy piece that you've seen of like a girl in you know a little bit of plate mail armor with her tits hanging out and she's got a little bit of like an animal skin sort of thing on her and couple of feathers in her hair and she's you know got a sky behind her or whatever it is it's it's like that was what i was trying to avoid i was trying to avoid the same old comic book covers and i think artists like kevin nolan in particular sort of exemplify that um that that comics will support you if you do something different you know it might not seem that way because i think that there's a tendency to think that like well you know Company X, this is their hottest book, so I should try to draw like that. Um, and it's understandable, but at the same time, I think it's also, um, you know, you don't have to do that to stand out. And in fact, editors might respond more to you actually drawing well, but doing something a little bit different. But, you know, like not completely out of the wheelhouse of something that they would publish. So you have to kind of feel feel that out. And you may have to massage it a little bit for a little while, meaning, you know, you may have to sort of meet them halfway. And then as you get more success, many artists do this, you kind of trick the company into trusting you. It's like, yeah, 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 no problem. I'll, I'll do what you want me to do. And then, you know, five or six issues in, when you get rolling, you start to do your own thing. I can think of a bunch of artists that have done that. Um, so, you know, it's never off the table. <laughs> All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Have a great day. Bye.